Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Spiffing Brit, the most British of them all, and today, here we are, playing Age of Empires Free. That's right, I bet half of you didn't even know this game existed. I imagine all of you have heard of Age of Empires 2, but Age of Empires Free, well, um, uh, there's a reason no one plays it anymore. I mean, if you genuinely take a look at the active players in Age of Empires 2, and then the active players of Age of Empires 3, you just have to ask yourself, where did it all go wrong? I mean, surely it can't be these beautiful beautiful 3D graphics that you're witnessing here. I mean, just look at that working flag physics. Mmm, it's working so well. But no, today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be playing Age of Empires 3, as I will, as always, demonstrate to you some absolutely fantastic exploits, and to destroy this game, and probably greatly imbalance the multiplayer, if anyone's still playing it. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we dive into this video, you're going to need a few things to start off with. Firstly, you're going to need a working copy of Age of Empires 3, Secondly, you're also going to need to know how to navigate files on your computer. And finally, you're also going to need to have the ability to sacrifice your firstborn son to our lord and saviour, the queen. Oh wait, what do you mean that's for a different video? Oh, okay, right, just remove that one, okay? What do you mean you can't remove it? It's already edited in the video. Okay, fine, right, just move on, distract them. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, what you're going to need to do is start a brand new single player game in Age of Empires 3, and if you haven't played the game before, then you're going to want to do a quick skirmish, load up the game, and immediately leave. But when you do this skirmish, make sure to select the French. I know, ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be playing the French, who could have believed it? But nonetheless, we need to play some Age of Empires 3 today as the French, and you might be wondering why. Well, it's because, ladies and gentlemen, the French are completely and utterly broken. You see, the game developers, they sat down and they thought, well, I mean, come on, historically speaking, we're making a game about colonization and empire building. There was one nation who kind of had a bit of a distinct advantage over the others when it came to colony building, and so for that reason, it would seem they've made the French overpowered. I know. But nonetheless, we are sadly going to have to play as the French today. And ladies and gentlemen, this game, it's an absolute mash of loads of other games. For some reason, unlike previous Age of Empires games, you pick your nation, but also you have to build a deck. That's right, they made it a deck building game as well now. So, so when you're in the game, you can, for example, I don't know, activate a card here. That gives you a free set of 300 food. Rather nice and useful indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But it gets even more wackier because you could also say press this and suddenly you have four cuirassiers who are some late game cavalry just randomly spawning in. But of course you're limited to only bringing in 20 cards and you don't actually start out with that many cards. No, no, no. You need to level up your town and city to unlock more cards. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm guessing that you, like almost everyone else who played this game, don't have the time to level up or even have the functional willpower to play this game. So for that reason, ladies and gentlemen, so don't worry, we won't actually be leveling up our account by playing the game. Instead, you're going to want to open up your Windows File Explorer. So what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen, is go all the way over to your My Games folder and then locate Age of Empires 3. And in the save game section, you will be able to find the SP underscore Paris underscore home city. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is our home city. Oh my goodness, don't load up. Don't load up Internet Explorer. What is going on here? Why would you open a file in Internet Explorer? It doesn't matter. Anyway, so what you want to do, open the file in something like Notepad or just text work anything, literally, as long as it's not Internet Explorer. And what you want to start doing is start editing this file. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few important sections of these files. For example, as you can see, the sieve we're playing as is the French. And, oh, our name. Oh, you know, apparently we want to be called Paris. We don't want to be called Paris. Instead, we're going to call it London, the kind of unexpected, relatively unwanted cousin of London. Oh, we need a hero name. A hero, ladies and gentlemen. A hero to go into the game and fight for us. Oh my goodness, who could our legendary hero be today? You have to be a French hero of sorts. So let's get a nice heroic French name going. Well, I mean, there's a lot of classical French names and generally they all begin with P, like, I don't know, Pierre or Philippe. 
But you know what, Philippe, that's that's too French, you know what, we're going to dial it back a bit. We're going to go for Phil, yes, a nice, classic British name like Phil. And then a last name, oh my goodness. Well, of course, it's got to be something sounding relatively French, like Mianus. Yes, Phil Mianus. What a fantastic name. Anyway, this is where things are going to get wacky, ladies and gentlemen, because instead of actually playing the game to level up our city, we're instead just going to put in loads of numbers here and just cheese the entire system. Instead of having 5,100. 176 experience, we're now going to have 51,000 experience. And how many skill points? We're just going to have 100 skill points, ladies and gentlemen. Fantastic, and we're just going to save that bad boy. And now, as you can see, our lovely home city has changed. Despite the fact that we're still flying the French flag, we are now level 10. And we have our legendary hero here, Filmianus. But most importantly, we now have a slightly more modified deck. As you can see, we apparently have 100 new cards available. Yeah, that's, uh, that's perfectly fine. Anyway, we need to actually build our deck. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we need to sit down and build a deck together. Now, we need to build a certain special kind of deck because we are looking to create a fantastic unity called the Couriers. These are the strongest cavalry unit in the game. They can basically take out literally everything. Buildings, cannons, infantry, you name it, they will smash it provided it isn't a ridiculous late game anti-cavalry infantry. But even then, with enough of them, you can. So we are going to be making these bad boys because thanks to France being so broken, you are able to spawn a literally unlimited quantity of them. So what you want to do is just start clearing up your deck because, let's be honest, it's not really that fantastic. Now there are a couple of very important cards for us to pick up. We want to grab this one here, the Riding School. This means all cavalry train faster. A lovely, lovely little bonus. I realise I actually need a city level of 25 to unlock some of these later ones, so I'll be right back. I need to edit that text file again. And there we go, we're now suddenly level 420 with a spare 200 million experience remaining. Anyway, we've managed to build our fantastic and lovely deck, that's right. Our deck consists of basically giving us some food and some free units in the early game. But then in age 2, things start getting a bit wacky because we suddenly have access to improved cavalry, but most importantly, a riding school. This riding school allows all cavalry to train faster. Oh, it's just going to be magical, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen, just you watch. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, playing as the French with our level 420 London. My goodness, we're going to absolutely destroy everyone we come up against. Who should we play with? You know what, let's actually play with Queen Elizabeth herself on our side. That's right, Queen Elizabeth, join my team. Yes, the French and the British working together to colonize a new world. Wow, suddenly something new and magical is happening here today, ladies and gentlemen. So, we have everything set up. We are absolutely perfect. And all that's left is for us to dive into this video. So, ladies and gentlemen, but actually you not. Know, before we do that, let's uh, just quickly see what the multiplayer seems like. Let's check Age of Empires Online. Testing network connectivity. Cool. Okay. Connecting. Right. Let's log in. Invalid username or password. Right. I might need to make a new account here. So, let's make a new account. Yes. Nickname. Let's go for Phil Mianus. Fantastic. Select secret question. Oh, my goodness. This is a good idea. I'll have to go for something that no one will be able to remember. So, let's go for the name of my... YouTube channel. Yes, no one's going to be able to get that. Fantastic. Well, let's go for an email address. Oh, well, um, of course, it's got to be phil at gmail.com. There you go, phil at gmail.com. Please do enjoy receiving emails from ES Online and the Age of Empires free community multiplayer team. Bam, we did it. We're actually in online with Phil Mianus. What's this? 707 people are online? Genuinely. Oh my goodness. That's actually not a bad amount of games being played considering it is a ridiculously warm day currently in the UK and everyone is melting to death. But wow, people are actually playing this game. Hats off to you. If you're still playing Age of Empires 3, genuinely I did not expect that. But hey, enjoy. But alas, all of that is unimportant. We must play against the AI, as is the classic fashion for myself, the Spiffing Brit. It is to decimate the AI and to make it just very, very upset. But without further ado, let's dive into this video. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're sat back, you relax, you have a nice warm cup of tea in front of you, or 
though considering it is something ridiculous like 30 degrees outside, I would say for today and today only, a cold iced tea is also accepted. Yes, you're only getting this opportunity once, so enjoy it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh goodness, please, Queenie, don't, don't get rid of me, oh my. I'm trying to get onto the New Year's Honours list, you see, and apparently drinking iced tea is one of the fastest ways to get removed from the Honours list. And also, before we start, make sure to do a lovely salute to the flag that you're flying above your computer, I'm sure you do. You know what, as a special offer to you, ladies and gentlemen, the most fantastic of you who find yourselves here early, I will say that for the first 15,000 of you, our lovely friend Phil Mianus will go to your house tomorrow, and he will colonise it for you on behalf of the Queen herself. And trust me, Phil Mianus can do some deep colonisation. Anyway, let's dive into the game. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the game itself. Lovely stuff. As you can see, it's, um, it's unique to say the least. As you can see, we appear to have landed in what is an excruciatingly cold and horrific climate. But don't worry, we have our hero here, Phil Mianus, who's going to go on adventures and help us take out the entirety of the world. Now what we need to do is get our economy up and running as soon as possible, and that means having a nice tasty source of food, as well as also activating some of our fantastic cards. So what you need to do is basically gain experience via, I don't know, doing the game, doing stuff, and then the more experience you have, the more shipments you can summon in. That's right, we can summon in, say, seven sheep. I know, fantastic. However, we're actually just going to summon in some free colonists. Yes, that should make our job much easier. Now, this game is really surprisingly different to Age of Empires 2. It flips a lot of the stuff that we've learned on its head, and instead, we have things like natives who you can do trading with, and whose roads will actually help prosper you, and then, of course, with the natives, you can just mandatorily force them into service and fighting for you. I know, fantastic, isn't it? But that's not what we're going to be doing today. Instead, in this cold, harsh northern climate, we are instead going to be using cavalry. That's right. We're going to be using elite French cavalry to try and, I don't know, win the game? We'll see how well it goes. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Is this, is this a native town? Yes, it's a trading post site. Lovely. Wow, yes, we could set up a trading post with the natives. Mmm, yes. The last time colonists tried to do that, it went perfectly fine. Oh my goodness, yes. The sheep we invested in early have turned into massive chunky boys. Look at them, they are huge. My goodness, one of my favourite exploits which used to be in this game, in fact it still is, but it takes a lot to pull off, is to basically destroy anyone you're playing against economy by just simply spamming out only sheep. You see, you could build a deck which comprises of only spawning in sheep, so what you do is you spawn in a ridiculous amount of sheep, and you just march them into the enemy's bases. Now this works especially well against the AI, because the enemy won't ever attack their own sheep, so it kind of puts you in a bit of a wacky situation where the AI's bases is just flooded with sheep that they refuse to kill, but the sheep block up everything, meaning the AI can't spawn in any infantry, because the sheep are just standing in the way of all of the buildings, and sheep do not move. But anyway, we've managed to reach the colonial age, which is a good sign, ladies and gentlemen. The colonial age allows us to pick our next set of cards to be sent for us, and of course we could just summon more resources, but the much better option is to simply summon cavalry, and of course upgrade the cavalry so they train faster and they fight better. There we go, perfect. So now our upgraded cavalry is on the way. And of course we could probably do it with cavalry stables of sorts. Oh my goodness, look, the Germans are attacking. Who would have expected the Germans to invade Canada with horses? Well, here they are nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen. And we need to technically deal with them, although we don't really have to. I mean, they are just going to run around and burn down our buildings, but it's honestly not that much of a faff, really. I mean, our infantry can actually kind of fend for itself, and by infantry I mean peasant workers. Yeah, for some reason our peasant workers are pretty decent at fighting. Now, some would say the situation hasn't really developed to the best of our situations. I mean, at the moment I've run out of tea and it's too warm to really make any more. And you know what, that makes me excruciatingly upset. Also, we are getting decimated by the Germans, but I'd like to focus on the tea, as that's what really makes me upset anyway, you know what, I think we can defeat the Germans. Good, yes. Here we go, and the Germans have been defeated. Fantastic. Now get back to working in the fields. Here we go, fantastic. We've got the church underway, which means at, at age four we are able to train cavalry faster. Lovely. And also here we have the arsenal, which allows us to improve all of our various units. So hand cavalry hit points can increase, and we can also make it so they do more damage to buildings, which trust me is going to be quite important. Anyway, we're also going to upgrade ourselves to the third age. Now, what should we do? Oh, we could go for the exiled prince, the mohawk statesman, the marksman, or maybe just the scout, because he comes with some free SRs. You know what? We'll go for the exiled prince, because that allows us to age up even faster. Good. Come on, my exiled prince. Give us your lovely cavalry. 
jewelry bonuses, we need them. So how this exploit basically works is normally you will spend quite a long time in these kinds of games actually training units, and one of the best ways to trick a player is to suddenly rush them with a large amount of units, or even better, it is to build a building very, very close to the enemy and have that spam out units. So the strategy we're going to be going for here today will involve rushing down a cavalry building as close to the enemy as we can get it, and then spamming out some units. Oh my, it would appear, and it would appear our red friend is getting attacked, so I'm going to send in some assistance. Go, my friends, go. There go, and I've called a support army to come and assist, and they will hopefully fight off the pikemen using their superior ranged advantage. And of course they can, yes. As you can see at the moment, we're getting attacked, so I need to bring out some cavalry, but the cavalry itself is rather expensive. Oh, and also we're going to level up to the next era, of course we are, and we'll get the cavalry marshal for the three extra cavalry units. But yes, as you can see, training out these cavalry units, it's taking a fair amount of time. Yeah, we haven't even trained our first one yet. Oh no, what a shame. But here we go, here's our first Corsair, he's out, and lo and behold, he's able to do a large area of effect attack, which is why people love him so much. You can just literally dive a load of these into a swarm, and whilst it might not look like they do a large amount of damage in one hit, if you get them into a swarm, my goodness, they will do a ton. Anyway, the AI has been defeated, and our horses will live to fight another day. And now that we are in the fourth age, we can finally invest into mass cavalry, which means cavalry trains even faster. Lovely stuff. It's going to cost us 750 gold, though, which is uh, something we don't have. Although we do have a ton of gold just lying around outside of our little house. Come on, why haven't we collected the gold yet, my friend? We literally had 500 gold lying around on the floor. Come on, that would have done it. There we go. We can now have the mass cavalry for the decreased cavalry training time. Lovely stuff. Oh, no. The French are attacking again. Classic. Oh, luckily for me, we can just summon them very quickly. As you see, when it comes to summoning cavalry, you can summon them in blocks of five. So, as you can see, we suddenly need five cavalry, so we'll summon four, and they will train in around about, uh, what is that, five seconds, and we'll bam, suddenly four cavalry units out on the field, able to shred up the enemy. Good stuff indeed. And there we go, our cavalry win the day once again. Oh, great. The Germans are attacking yet again with their veteran cavalry, but, I mean, their cavalry doesn't actually really hold up that well against ours. And also, even though they might win this one, don't worry, we can just spam out another five cavalry units. Only costs about 500 and something, but no, no, not really necessary. We won anyway. Fantastic. Oh my goodness, this cavalry can spawn very quickly. I mean, this is just one stable and we are able to defeat multiple stables worth of an infantry push with ultimate ease. I mean, it's just so easy. Now we're reaching a point where basically we're getting held back by our distinct lack of population. I mean, we don't actually have that many workers. We only have one mill up and running, one little plantation bringing in coin. We could do with so much more. So I've sent out Filmianus to set up a brand new city over here, a new town center. Oh, it will be glorious. As I, the yellows attacking again. The yellows as well? Come on, guys. Oh, well, don't worry. We've got the massive area of effect, so uh, we should be fine. Oh, wow, they really are attacking. Right, okay, fine. Spawn out the cavalry. One more set of cavalry. You know, once we're at it, we might as well spawn some more. I mean, it is ridiculously cheap. Oh, and here come the Germans as well. More Germans. <laughs> oh, more Germans. You know what that means? That means more cavalry. If only we had spare gold lying around. Right, there we go. We managed to fight off this next French wave. My goodness, they really sent quite a lot our way this time. And it's really taught me about the value of having a lot of spare gold lying around. Oh my goodness, what an absolute mess this is. You know what? I give up. My AI friend here has been absolutely useless. I'm going to come back at this and try it another time because I've really beans this one up. So you know what? This one was a test run, but I've learned a lot when it comes to spamming out cavalry. So I'll be right back and we're back in a new improved situation where Spiff has finally learned the actual controls of the game. Right, bam, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. The last game, it um didn't go so well. Uh, the AI kept attacking and I forgot that I might actually need to build up a military to stop the AI from doing such a thing. But nonetheless, apparently my total strategies aren't always that welcome. Anyway, I also discovered that I accidentally put myself on the wrong map. Basically, there are a couple of regions which have some added bonuses which decrease the training time of horses even further, which is why we're going to be playing a brand new game today, ladies and gentlemen. So, let us play. Right, so here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We're in our brand new game and fantastic look we've landed in our new world we've got our scouts we even have the legendary Phil Mianus here supporting us today ladies and gentlemen my goodness it's so fantastic to have him with us now what should we get all of our lovely citizens to do well probably cut down some trees or something like that yes meanwhile Phil Mianus over here he's going to try and discover some brand new native tribes for us to become friends with that's right there are natives out here somewhere and we're going to make friends with them and by friends I mean we're going to literally run in there and steal most of their properties. Ah, oh, here we have it. It's the Incan Settlement. Lovely. This is exactly what
what we want to go grab. We want our explorer headed right over here to grab this Incan settlement. Yes, perfect. Now the Incan settlement can basically be upgraded, it can be defended, but by investing in the Incan settlement we can get upgrades which last forever for us and one of those upgrades decreases the cavalry training time by 25%. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and when paired with our existing decrease of 50%, you can see that things get slightly out of hand. And there we have it, we've managed to get our lovely little Incan settlement up. And this means we can discover Incan road building techniques, but most importantly, the Incan Shasqui messengers, which means fast Incan communications that lets you train soldiers faster. There you go, that's all it costs, we've got it, and now we can train all units 25% faster. And research is now underway in our capital town centre as we tech up from the discovery age to the next fantastical age. Oh, some idle workers. Idle workers, come on, you need to be harvesting all of those trees, yes. And fantastic, as we are now in the next age, we can finally start investing in our lovely upgrades like the decreased cavalry training time, the unique French upgrades, and a improved blacksmith, as well as just better horses. There we go. You know, we should probably also get our first stables down, you know, just in case the enemy does attack so that, you know, we're nice, ready, and prepared for them. And also, thanks to my lovely upgrade, we can get the arsenal down early, and that allows us to get some early improvements done over here. But what we should be focusing on is just simply moving to the next age. So let's go for the Exiled Prince once again, as he ages up much faster than the others, and this allows us to slightly rush aspects of the game. Lovely stuff indeed. So there we go, we are now in Age 3, the Fortress Age, and we're sadly not able to quite get our lovely mass cavalry for the decreased cavalry training time, but we're almost there. We are so close, ladies and gentlemen gentlemen, we are getting very close. There we go, we're finally going to be able to advance the Industrial Age lovely stuff. Luckily I decided to get an ally in the Ottomans and they've done a fantastic job of just dealing with anyone who comes my direction. It's been an absolute waltz in the park in comparison to the last game. It would appear the Russians actually came in for an attack, but our cavalry naturally does the classic cavalry thing of just absolutely smashing everything because it's so overpowered. Yes, there really is something very much broken about the French cavalry. There is almost no counter to them. Oh, you know what, I think we're actually ready to do Operation Super Mega Sneaky Boy. What we're actually doing, ladies and gentlemen, is we are deliberately marching towards the enemy so that we can place down the stables. So when we're close by, which I think is probably about here, yes, this seems like a good spot, we're going to build our lovely brand new stables, yes, our fantastic cavalry building. And by doing so, you know what, we're just going to deploy it and tell it to spawn units in that general direction. Let us simply attack the various Russian peasants that we see in front of us. So let us spawn in some cavalry. Oh my! They just spawn in instantly? What's going on here, ladies and gentlemen? Oh no, surely that can't be a gameplay feature? Oh, but it is. And this is some of the most effective cavalry you will ever see. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Oh, Russian army. We haven't even taken any losses yet. Anyway, let us burn down this building here. This is an actual barracks. This is their main barracks that we are just tearing down with horses. You wouldn't think that horses would be able to do this. Well, that's where you're wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Horses are broken. What's this? We might want reinforcements. Very well then. We'll just just quickly upgrade all of our cavalry to give them an extra 50% hit points and then we'll spawn in some more. What's going on here? What are you building? You're building a blockhouse? No, you don't want one of those. No. no. Allow me to burn that down for you. Oh wow, they really can't do anything. Oh look, they've got one grenadier. He's gone. I'm sorry. Really shouldn't, really shouldn't have tried that one. Oh no, you attacking my little stables over here. Very well, spawn a couple of these bad boys. What's that? We've run out of pop housing. I suppose we probably could have done with a few more houses, couldn't we? All right, there we go. Spawn out a couple of cavalry to defend us. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, so uh, cavalry is broken in this game, as you can see. Um, this is the town centre gone. Oh, there are all the peasants hiding inside the town centre. No, please, peasants, flee. So the reason why you want to do this as the French, because whilst you can do this as any major European nation like the British, the British British cavalry, for some reason in this game, is not as overpowered as the French one. So you see, this French cavalry can have its hit points increased by, I think, about 70% overall if you really want to get it going. But equally, this French cavalry has an air of effect attack, it is perfect at dealing with any infantry, and its only counter is probably the Germans. And even then, because we have so many great numbers and can spam them out at such great speed, there is no counter to them. If you try and amass a large amount of spears to take out these cavalry, it doesn't make a difference because this 
cavalry can just do a massive area of effect attack to wipe out all spears in one go. So there you go ladies and gentlemen, Ivan the Russian has been defeated. It really is as easy as that. And what to do with our 22 stack of horsey boys? Well we might as well just send them into the enemy base. I do believe we've absolutely smashed this game now ladies and gentlemen. I don't think there's a single way the AI can come back from this. Oh anyway, we now have Imperial Guard Domain, an even more improved version of the horsey boys. They now do even more damage. They are fantastic. Just look at these statistics we have here. Hit points 11,000. So their base hit points was 500. We've now increased it by 600. They have a speed of 6.25. Oh, Ivan the Terrible, my town's a burning ruin. It's hopeless. I must offer my surrender. No, no surrender, Russians. But yes, this lovely little horseman, he resists 20% of range damage. He has a 63 siege attack bonus. That's how much damage he does. 63 siege attack. And in that's with a range of six and an area of two with an improved modifier against buildings and he has a hand attack of 63 but a damage area of two so he can hit two units in front of him and look at how many we have so many they are fantastic they just can't be defeated in any way i mean instead look at our regular peasant infantry here they have a chop attack of eight and a ranged attack of eight so these guys are just so much better in every regard <laughs> these horses are fantastic but hey what if you want more of them that's okay you just spam click out more horses and there you go wham we have have suddenly double the horses. We have 48 horses. Okay, right. Horses, let's go. Let us just finally win this game. Let's get rid of the Germans. The Germans were meant to be the one thing that we wouldn't be able to defeat, but no, with 40 horses, you can kind of defeat anything. Oh, here we go. We got a couple of German peasants. Right, let us instantly one-hit them. A couple of settlers' wagons. No, 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 no. Oh, and here we go. The German army is now rolling out to greet us, but I'm afraid they are getting absolutely decimated as they march out one by one into us. Right, horses just generically attack move in this direction there we go so now they're going to just generally charge in any direction but attack everything they see go my horses go i'd also like to point out that i've managed to do everything you've seen here in the game i've managed to completely forget to build a market building which would have given us some fantastic bonuses that i just completely forgot about oh are you doing okay horses you look like you need a bit of micromanagement if i'm honest you look like you're struggling anyway let us burn down the town center sorry town center i must say i love the little graphics they have and the town center's gone okay it's all gone oh frederick the great my empire has been defeated off my surrender oh fred there is no surrender freddy boy yeah i mean if you encounter this kind of strategy in multiplayer i'm sure there are players who would be able to counter it i suppose with a couple of well-timed cannon bolts you could probably shred through it but but generally the best strategy to counter this would be to just rush the enemy player early on if you think they're going for this just rush them lovely stuff i think we've completely defeated the germans now as well and we actually haven't lost a single cavalry by the way we have 47 cavalry and we also have one little horsey boy over here being a pain so we did that entire attack to take out the entirety of the german empire and we lost nothing absolutely nothing ladies and gentlemen i'd like to point out by the way we are playing on moderate difficulty here today ladies and gentlemen but this strategy works on all difficulties against all players it is just fantastic and if only we had actually more capacity for units we could just spam out even more but sadly we've kept absolutely cap the unit population cap oh well it was such a shame of you to install such a thing oh, here we go i think this is the last random german settler just wandering around now we watch as he gets charged by 47 heavy cavalry ah oh, success and there we go frederick the great it does not take a genius to recognize i'm defeated i request to resign well of course you're defeated fred you played against the mighty hand of the spiff and the empire you see you simply cannot defeat someone fueled by yorkshire tea especially someone who is literally melting in 40 degrees as the UK turns into just a pile of mush in this heat wave and yet I still sit here sipping Yorkshire tea at boiling temperature knowing that my power cannot be diminished by such a thing known as sun. But the victory is ours ladies and gentlemen we've done it. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen you have just witnessed a fantastic game of Age of Empires 3. Such a fantastic game it really is. If you'd like to see more heck you might even want to see another Age of Empires 2 video then do give me a shout and actually there is one thing I I'd be interested to know. Was Age of Empires your favourite Age of Empires game or was it Age of Empires 2? Because I honestly feel like in almost every regard Age of Empires 2 was a better game. As fun as Age of Empires 3 was, the unit pathing was just so much more clunkier, a lot of the game mechanics just felt very strange, the whole era and timing that this game is built around just felt a bit odd. But nonetheless ladies and gentlemen I'm afraid we're going to have to say goodbye to Age of Empires 3 here today. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today then feel free to give the video a like. It means
means the world to me. Thank you very much. And as always, a huge thank you to each and every one of my majestic patrons who make the silly videos like this all the more possible and also bankroll things like the community Minecraft server. I know, we have one of those now. Heck, I mean, we even have merchandise. What's happening in this world? God bless the Yogscast for making some fantastic designs, I must say. They are beautiful stuff. Anyway, if you're wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now. Trust me, it is absolutely right up your alley and you're going to love it. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been the Spiffing Brit. I'll see all of you in the next one and goodbye for now.